Hey guys, welcome back to Plastic Picasso. I'm Brian Bowman here for Disc Golf Examiner. Back with a new episode out of uh, Mike Sullivan's self-portrait series. And we have, for the first time, a female artist in our show. I'm sorry it took so long. We're here today with Katie Longoria. She's out of Michigan. Say hi, Katie. Hi. Uh, so yeah, I uh, when Mike first announced that he was doing this series I said please make sure you get some female artists he said that's absolutely one of his priorities and I'm so glad we got there there were so many delays in getting this disc out just because of supply issues and COVID but we finally got it out and we're here today to talk about your stamp which is definitely Egyptian inspired I believe we've got Anubis here with his scales and you put out a really great explainer of this but for the folks that didn't read that why don't you go ahead and tell them about this stamp, uh, what it means to you as a self-portrait, and you know, kind of how it came about. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, I wasn't expecting Mike to share the whole thing of me explaining it all, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess um, the most important thing, obviously, it's Anubis. Like, you think that's kind of weird for a self-portrait to be like the goddess of death, or you know, um, and so <laughs> it's really not because they also consider it as like you know rebirth almost yeah change going to the next phase right. type of thing mm -hmm. yeah. and the main reason why i chose anubis was because you can see him throughout time unlike some of the other ones mm -hmm. um and like in the renaissance period you can see anubis like in statues and stuff and that's another one of my favorite periods mm -hmm. so i was like oh that ties in a little bit okay. um to some of my favorite things in Egyptian history, and I just always found that interesting. And let's say he's got a heart and a skull. He's got a heart on one side of it, and clearly he's like off kilter, kind of. Like you almost mm -hmm. don't know which way to hold the stamp. Is the scale tilted right. or is he tilted? And it's kind of like throwing you off balance a little bit, especially with that right. swirly plastic too. You know? For sure. And you're supposed to feel that tension of the tilting, that it wasn't per ah. perfectly centered around it. Yeah. It just... The unbalance of the scales, like I said in the description, like I'm always trying to find a balance of disc golf and extra my graphic work and sleep and friends. Like, how do you find the balance of all that stuff? Yeah, and, and this, I've, this year especially, like every artist we've talked sure. to has kind of talked about feeling unbalanced and not really knowing where to go. And I mean, I'm... I know you guys didn't intend that, but clearly everybody's kind of feeling the same. It the just same kind of happened. I guess that's just the year. But Life inspires art, I guess, right? For sure. It definitely does. <laughs> that's for sure. So you mentioned your day job. What's what's your day job? So I'm, I am a graphic designer. I work at a place that does vinyl uh, wraps for cars and signs ah, and stuff. That's cool. I have actually worked with a number of companies back in my day when I lived in D.C. that did like large scale printing, like they would do wraps for buildings and stuff. Yeah. So, and we do some like the wall art, too. Yeah. That's really cool. So you uh, you're mostly doing like interpreting other people's designs there. Right. Basically. Or are you kind of free to do what you want? What Whatever the companies want, really. And they just kind of come up with something. And right. But then you get with it. <laughs> Then you have your disc golf art for your outlet when you want. Yes. I, I love the freelance projects. I love the disc golf art. I mean, that's kind of one of the things that got me into the sport. Like, I had to do it. I saw the stamps huh. on the discs, and I was like, I need to be a part of this because I love graphic design, and I'm really loving disc golf. Like, this has got to be really cool. Okay, so that's a, a good segue. Talk about how you got into disc golf then. Like, so you had some friends that were into it, and you saw the disc art, or...? Yeah, so our friend uh, Matt Ingersoll, he got us into it. Um, okay. He was on the SVSU team in college, and so he was like, oh, yeah, you guys should come. So we tried it a few times, and we just kind of dove right in. I was like, oh, I like this. Like, <laughs> yeah, you I either dive right far in. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, I was like, I want to throw far like the guys. I want to really do this. And then I was like, oh, these stamps are really cool, and he throws all MVP. So it's really his fault that we're so uh -huh. <laughs> obsessed with MVP. Um, yeah, I and you're from Michigan. Saw the foils. Yeah, and yeah. I'm like that's cool. And Brad and Chad went to SVSU apparently, and I'm like, I, we did went to SVSU, ah. so this is pretty cool. So <laughs> okay. we kind of just dove right in, and it's been <laughs> ever since. Yeah, with this golf, you either hate it, and never go back, or after day one, you're hooked forever. So right. yeah, that's really cool. Do you do you remember hooked. what disc design you saw that really made you say, "Oh, this is awesome"? By chance? I, I don't know specifically. I really don't. 
I don't either. Someone <laughs> asked me the other day the same thing. I never like, thought of that. No, I don't know. I think it was probably one of Marmoset's designs for me, but I don't know. It's mm-hmm. It's been so long at this point. Um, I want to so, say it was one of Mike's or Skullboy's. Makes sense. Because he has a lot of those in the Absolutely. bag. Absolutely. So you play, obviously. Uh, you compete yes. and stuff. Uh, I know you said today that you were playing like two rounds before we recorded. <laughs> I, I was at leagues, yeah. Okay. I probably still have hat hair, but <laughs> it's right. cold here. But um, yeah, I just started tournaments last year. Um, I started in FA1, and so I'm just playing as much as I can. Head and first. won quite a few, so that was fun. Um, no kidding. Definitely definitely getting going here that's this year i'm putting in a lot of off-season work as much as i can so do you guys have a big female field out there i know here in pittsburgh we struggle a bit like we have out-of-towners that come but our local field is kind of limited do you got do you have like good competition in fa1 i mean there's really not a ton in the area i mean it's hit or miss for tournaments even too unless you're marketing straight for women there's a few women in the area at leagues and stuff but it's it's definitely Tough. a completely different field to try to get the ones that are really into it together. Hmm. Yeah. Wonder what could we? What could artists do? No, that, that's too much. <laughs> <laughs> I know. That's, that's a big ask of an artist to, to, to get. I have seen <laughs> right, but I have seen this year. Like there have been a few exclusively women's tournaments to really call more people together, and that's always really cool. I threw my first all women's tournament last year and it was oh, so a you're a TD different too. atmosphere no no i didn't throw it okay. i went to i went to through at it yeah gotcha yeah yeah very cool uh so let's see we talked about what you do oh what do you do for fun and i'm asking this knowing that i saw you uh gutting a deer the other day oh. <laughs> And it's, I just finished the last of my venison from last year and my uncle got a deer. So I got a new shipment coming in. I was intrigued yeah. by that. You, you into like all kinds of outdoor sports and hunting, and fishing, all that. all the outdoors. Oh yeah. Um, Andrew and I, my fiance, we have a bass boat. So we really like bass fishing, hunting, like anything outdoors. That's why I love disc golf. Cause it gives you an excuse to get outside and yeah. to be out in it. And I just love that after I sit at a desk all day, like it drives me insane. <laughs> Yeah, I went from sitting at a desk all day to sitting at home all day and then trying not to go outside. Like, you know, we, we had a baby yeah, it's really this year. Weird. And, uh, we I had didn't a baby. See that. So, She's super cute. Yeah, I don't get to play anymore. And I, I've done that purposely. I don't want to be out around people. And my wife works with COVID patients, so I don't want to expose anybody. So I haven't got right. to play at all, but I'm, I'm resolved to get some rounds in this year for sure. Yeah, it's a great excuse to get out. So what do you have coming up this year? Do you have other stamps lined up? Are you a sponsor? Are you a sponsor player? You got sponsors out there? So I don't have any disc sponsors, but I You're not sponsored wandering. by MVP. <laughs> I wish. Oh, guys, she's winning <laughs> tournaments over here. Oh my gosh. No, but um, I am a Wander Ambassador, um, the apparel company. They're awesome. Ty owns awesome. Big into mental health, and they're just really great. And I also am a part of... Flight Co., um, their oh, Ridge co- team. They're also an apparel company out of Tennessee. I know a lot of people in Tennessee. That's <laughs> kind of where it got me started. A couple <laughs> of clubs down there kept me doing tournament stamps over and over again. And so I know quite a few down there. And so he's out of there. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Very nice. Yeah, you do good work. People tend to come back. That seems to be mm-hmm. how it works these days. So you've got uh, those sponsors. We're going to get you sponsored by MVP somehow. <laughs> Because you're going to get some big wins this year. You got disc designs I'm coming try. up? Yeah. Uh, I do, yeah. I have four disc designs, at least right now. Okay. I'm the first artist for Tim and Jessica Harrison's Give Back series. I don't know if you've seen that. I did not. But... Why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so that is super cool because you're buying a disc, right, that I made the stamp for in their series mm-hmm. online. And you actually get to pick out a disc from their website, a putter, for a child in foster care. So it's basically you're buying a disc to give a disc, and you get oh, to hand pick it awesome. off the website. So it's super cool. That is really cool. When it, is that like starting now? Is it in pre-orders, that kind of stuff? Or? So it's it's coming pretty quick. I just gave him the stamp. Um, awesome. He mentioned it. He did a little teaser on the <laughs> fan page. Okay. But yeah, it's definitely coming down the pipeline, and it's super cool cause. Awesome. So is that all four of your discs for the year or is that just one or? Oh no, I just one. I have okay. some tour series stamps, some tournament stamps. Great. A lot of projects all the time. 
That's awesome. Trying to keep up. Right, right, right. So uh, anything, anything else you want to talk about? I mean, I know uh, I feel bad that we're like eight episodes or seven episodes in and we just got to our first female artist. But from day one, I, I asked around and your name was definitely at the top of everybody's list for me to interview. So I'm glad we got this definitely on yeah, the books. Sure. But uh, like who inspires you out there? Can you recommend to me some female artists that folks may not have heard of or that you've seen work from that you really like? I honestly don't know for disc stamps. Like, it's so yeah. limited. I hardly have seen any names. I, I remember Amy Anderson might have done a couple a long time ago. I've seen on, like, the Buy, Sell, Trade come up. but <laughs> That was the other artist. That's and there were some <laughs> There were some dye artists and paint artists that were recommended, too. But you can't be the only one out there doing uh, I don't. I really don't know. <laughs> stamp art. And, you know, if she is, let's get some more females in here. And if you guys know right. people, definitely put in the comments below because... I'm here to s spread the word of all of these artists, and I'd like to get some diversity that aren't, you know, your average right. disc golf players, <laughs> you know, the, the guys <laughs> that you associate when you say disc golf, bearded bearded guys uh, that look like me, really. <laughs> we need less right. of that in disc golf. <laughs> oh, my gosh. No. Yeah, it's definitely a different atmosphere kind of being the select few, you know. It's, it's kind of interesting. I don't know. Well, it's where, great. Where is everyone? Like, join this golf. No, <laughs> exactly. Stamps. And I'm glad you're here to, like, put out a great example for folks who want to get started. Like, um, you know, there's not really any boundaries. Get in contact with these guys like Donna and Mike and all of these independent. For sure. The independent distribution scene is, like, just fueling so much art right now. So I don't think for that sure. there's been a better time to get involved. No. And, like, if someone new has questions, like, don't be afraid to ask any of us artists. Like I know in the beginning when I was like, how do I even get about like doing stamps and right. having people give me the opportunities? Like I asked Zam multiple questions. I've asked Skullboy and Mike and like, they're just also welcoming of like, yeah, this is how you do it. This is how you can get a start. And all right. Like, so step one is feel free to ask sure. people. Step two, Definitely. start getting, I mean, I'm sure you have a portfolio and stuff that you show around. I guess one thing that you really got to consider is like the limit, the foil. Like for me, that's, I mm -hmm. really like foil. And I think that's something that not a lot of people think of working in and you got to right. think of all the possibilities mindset. that could be put in there that still makes it look good. Right. You know? And I'm still learning. Like I've only done stamps for two years. I've only been playing disc golf since 2018. So I'm still figuring it out as I go. Well, I really think you nailed it with this. It's like so three-dimensional with the highlights. And like I got a very stock blue foil mm -hmm. uh, with black and silver, in it, but it just like really has a lot of dimension with that. It looks like his it's, hands kind of coming off it. Great it's job. It's definitely one of my favorites. So I didn't far. even see what mold this is. A uh, pilot. Nice. Pilot, nice. I think. Very cool. Well, Katie, uh, if there's anything else you want to say, now's the time. But otherwise, I just want to thank you. Um, obviously, thank your sponsors. And yeah, um, for sure. we hope that we see more art for you this year. And hopefully we'll Definitely get another will. interview in sooner <laughs> yeah. than later. <laughs> yeah, for sure. All right, guys. Uh, let's all thank Katie. Comments below, questions below for Katie. And once again, I'm Brian Bowman for Disc Golf Examiner here for Plastic Picasso, and until next time, keep banging those chains.